Hello, I hope you're doing well. Thanks for joining me. You know, if you're learning about Arduino, you've no doubt come across the term Arduino Shield. So this tutorial will explain what they are, why they're so awesome, and several things to consider when buying them. So as you may know, the Arduino is for prototyping. It's a platform for designing cool electronics ideas that you have. Now the Arduino in itself is pretty awesome and you can do a lot of stuff with just an Arduino. But before long, you're going to want to start adding all types of cool technologies, you know, like Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, radio frequency stuff, motors, you know, all that type of neat stuff. But you know, it can be tricky, especially if you're just getting into electronics and program, if you just want to start adding all that hardware yourself. So what shields do is they take all the complexity of the hardware and they basically reduce it to a really simple interface. And what this does is it allows you to get your ideas up and running really fast. Now, it's not just the hardware that Shields take care of. In many cases, Shields also have these programming libraries associated with them. And what the libraries allow you to do is to easily implement the hardware that is available on the Shield. Now, there's shields for all types of things. I mean, they've got LCD shields, LED matrix shields, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth shields, motor shields, power supply shields, Geiger counter shields. There's even shields for cooking hot dogs. So chances are, if you need to do something, there's a shield that exists for it. So before you start throwing all these components on a breadboard, you know, do some Googling. Maybe you can find a shield that's just going to solve that problem for you. That is, of course, if you're just trying to get to the solution as quick as possible. Now shields actually plug right into the top of an Arduino. So the black plastic rows along the side of an Arduino are called headers. And on the bottom of a shield, you're going to see all these long spiky pieces of metal. And these are called pins. And so the pins on a shield line up with the header rows on an Arduino and they fit in snugly. And we'll talk a little bit more about this later. So you might be wondering why they call them shields in the first place. A common misconception is that since they fit on the top of the Arduino and kind of protect it in this manner, that's why they were named shields. But the true entomology of the use of the word shield is derived from the story of an Italian sandwich maker who lived in Florence around 1240 AD. So now let's shift gears and talk about a bunch of things that you should think about when you're getting ready to buy a shield. All right, so first off, does it have good documentation? So documentation is just a fancy way of saying, are they going to show me how the heck to use this thing? So basically, is there some type of tutorial or user manual or forum that talks about how to use the shield? This is really one of the biggest factors for me when it comes to buying a shield. For all the ease of use that a shield provides, if I don't know how to use it, it's about as good as a rock to me. Now, lucky for us, people who use Arduino tend to be pretty awesome, and they do a great job about writing on how, you know, about the stuff they're using and how to use it. So even if the manufacturer doesn't have good instructions, if people actually use the Shield, then you'll find a wealth of information about it online. But if you do a Google search and it doesn't turn up much of anything useful, you really might consider looking for another option. Two U.S. companies that provide superb documentation of the shields that they make and sell are Adafruit, Adafruit Industries and SparkFun. So I would check both of them out if you haven't already. Now, many shields are sold as kits. And what that means is they're not fully assembled. So you'd have to, it would require you to do some soldering when you actually get the shield. So if you're buying from a reputable source, you should know this ahead of time. But it is worth double checking. Sometimes, you know, they'll just show you the finished shield and then you, you might not realize that, hey, I actually have to solder on some of the stuff. So sometimes manufacturers will offer the shield as a kit or they'll offer it fully assembled. So sometimes I'll just go ahead and buy the one that's fully assembled just to save time. That being said, if you haven't soldered before, shields are usually a cinch to solder. So don't be intimidated. I, you know, I would just go buy a cheap soldering iron and some solder and uh, you could easily get it together. Now on a quick aside, probably the most important thing when soldering an Arduino shield is making sure that the pins on the bottom of the shield are straight up and down when you solder them on. Because if they aren't, then they're going to match up kind of funky with the Arduino headers and it's going to be a major pain connecting them. So that's the only thing to really pay close attention to when you are putting together a shield from a kit. Now what's cool about shields is that you can actually stack shields on top of one another. So maybe you want to have a 
you know, a robot with wheels on it, and then you want it to be Wi-Fi enabled and Bluetooth enabled. You can, you could get a motor shield, a motor driver shield, and a Wi-Fi shield, and a, all these shields stack them on top of each other, and you know, go for it. That's cool. But not all shields are stackable. So one giveaway, if a shield is stackable or not, is whether or not it has pin headers on top of it. So again, those plastic rows of holes. Those are the uh, pin headers, and if there's no pin headers on the board, then you're probably not going to be able to stack on top of it. Another thing to look for is if there's components that, like really big bulky components that sit on the shield, they might actually block another shield from top coming down to connect to the pin headers, so that can be an issue. Now one really important thing to understand when you're buying a shield is that these shields will be using pins on the Arduino. Let's say, for example, we're not using a shield and I just want to hook up a couple LEDs to my Arduino. So, you know, I put some resistors on a breadboard, I, let's say pins six and seven, and then I connect the resistors to some LEDs and then I take both of the LEDs to ground. So now as I look at my Arduino, you can see I've used two of the general purpose input output pins. So I can't use those pins for other functions when I'm lighting up the LED. If I were to turn these two LEDs into a shield, so I'd get a printed circuit board made, and I'd have you know all the components just right on, on put on the circuit board. Now, the way the shield works is it's just going to do the same thing as my jumper wires did before, but it's going to connect through the pins on the bottom of the shield. But the shield is still using those pins six and seven. So even though there's holes on the top of the shield for getting to pins six and seven that doesn't mean that I can use those pins because that shield is actually using those pins. So I hope that makes sense. Now, in, in some cases, these shields will use a lot of the pins. And so the point I'm trying to make is that it's important you understand which pins the shield is using. Because if a shield requires eight of your pins, then maybe you're not going to have enough input-output pins to do the other stuff you wanted to do. Maybe you had a bunch of sensors you wanted to hook up or whatever. Now, if you're stacking shields and some of those shields use the same pins, well then you might have, uh, you might run into trouble again. Now there's ways to deal with this. For example, you could adjust the timing of when you're using each shield so that they're not interrupting one another. That might be one solution. But the pins being used are definitely something you should be considering when you're buying the shield. Now one other thing you might want to look out for is to realize that not all shields are going to have the same amount of pins to fill the headers of an Arduino. Now this is because older versions of an Arduino actually didn't have as many pin headers as the newer versions. So usually this isn't too much trouble, but that is unless you actually needed to use those pins that are on the Arduino that are not going to get connected up to the Arduino shield. Now if you have an older version of Arduino, then you might buy a shield that has more pins than your Arduino has headers because it's been built for the newest version of the Arduino. Now usually these two are still physically compatible, so this shouldn't be anything to sweat about. So on a final note, if you're having trouble with a shield working, it is worth checking out to see if you have the most current library version for the version of your shield hardware. So one great example is the near ubiquitous Adafruit Motor Shield. There is a hardware version 1 and a hardware version 2, and there's two separate code libraries for both of these. So if you're trying to run the new version of the hardware on the old version of the library, then you know you could really run into some troubles if it's not backwards compatible. So thanks a ton for checking out the video. I hope it was helpful. I hope you have an idea of what shields are and some things to think about when you're getting ready to buy one. If you like this type of tutorial style, I welcome you to subscribe to my channel on YouTube. And I also highly recommend you come to the Open Source Hardware Group website, especially if you want to try to jumpstart your learning. I actually have some courses over there. There's a free course and a paid course. Either one, again, if you're interested in kind of getting on the fast track with uh, learning Arduino, they're worth checking out. All right. Hey, have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.